Greetings, friends. Welcome, welcome to Sovereign Grace Dunk. I do thank you for taking time on your busy day to watch your videos. I do pray that our, our studies in the Word of God and studies of history of faith be a blessing to those who are following along. Friends, it is a blessing to have the freedom to be able to stand before you and proclaim the Word of God, preach the truth. Even that itself, what a great blessing it is. For those out there that have been led astray in all manner of lies and heresies, my heart goes out to you. Many who are teaching and you know, out here on the internet, you can hear all manner of things. See all manner of things, all manner of wickedness and ungodliness. And when it comes to things that are taught, there's much philosophy and stuff that is to no avail, to no profit. I see these things out here, these uh, videos that speak of the ancient history, believing in ancient civilizations, believing in, well, it, it just amazes me the stories they've worked up and how they have, uh, you know, the imagination to create such fictional stories of, about ancient civilizations and a history that just you know, even our modern history, they do not know and understand as well as what they claim to understand ancient history that they say is hundreds and millions of years ago. Going all the way back and they claim to understand all these things about how it was then and how... But we don't even understand how our world is today, do we? They can't explain the weather patterns, they can't predict the weather. They cannot tell you indeed what's going on all over this world at any one given time. But yet they claim to know so much about the past. They're liars. But we have an advocate who is at the right hand of the throne of God. He's at the right hand of God the Father. That being Jesus Christ, our high priest, the only begotten Son of God, the only one, the only way, the only truth, the only life, there is no other. He is a part of the Trinity. The Father that sent him, he went back unto the Father. And it is the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit of God, that reveals him unto us. Without the working of the Holy Ghost in you, you cannot see Jesus. You cannot believe upon it. Faith is the gift of the Holy Spirit unto us to believe upon Jesus Christ as, our, as the true Lord and Savior, the true Messiah, the Christ, to trust in the salvation of the Lord, which is set forth and declared. We read here again in 1 John chapter 5, where again it says unto us, Whosoever believeth, and right there, friends, is the key, Whosoever believeth will be saved. But it says here, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And that is very specific. You have to believe that Jesus Christ is who he is. You can't disbelieve upon a man. Oh, there was a great prophet, a great religious teacher named Jesus. Believing upon that Jesus won't save you. But believing upon the Jesus that is the Christ will save you. And everyone that loveth him that begot, loveth him also that is begotten. That's a characteristic of those that are truly saved. They have a great love, not just for their fellow brothers and sisters, but a love for all. And friends, we do desire that you might understand the love of God. That you might believe upon God's Son, upon Jesus Christ, under the saving of your souls. And in trusting in Him, you'll find that you will have love for all. He says, by this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and keep His commandments. It's going to be part of the characteristics of salvation. You're going to desire to... You're going to have a desire to keep the things of God, keep His commandments, keep the teachings of Christ, keep the teachings of the Word of God. 
For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not grievous. What commandments are those? Well, it's the teaching of the Word of God from the beginning of Genesis, Genesis to the end of Revelation. Well, there are some heretics out there saying all we need to do is study the writings of Paul. That's all we need. That's, that's heresy. It's all here. Paul himself quotes the Old Testament 20 times in his books. He also speaks of the Gospels. Oh, but they'll say, oh, we don't need that. It's not written to us. We don't need that. Uh, yes, we do. Yes, we do. There are for types and shadows for our admonition, instructions and righteousness. For the love of God, it says... For this is the love of God that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not grievous. Some are, uh, some are grieved having to study that Old Testament. Some are grieved having to try to understand it, preach it unto others. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. But this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. And not just the Son, the only begotten Son, my friends. We that believe we are all the sons of God, but Jesus is the only begotten Son of God. It's a distinction that some modern Bibles are taking out. This is He that came by water and blood. Now here in the Spirit of God shows us here the true and factual fact that this person was born into this world in a body of flesh prepared for him. Born of water and blood. It says he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. That Holy Ghost, that Holy Spirit of God is truth. It cannot lie, cannot deceive, it will not lead you into wickedness. It will not lead you into anything that's not the truth. That's of the flesh. Our fleshly minds get to dwelling upon ungodly things. Our fleshly minds, uh, we, we hear the fictitious stories. This fictional stories that man comes up with about ancient history about aliens, about, uh, you know, all manner of things. And we'll, we'll swallow that hook, line, and sinker and believe it like it's an actual fact. Okay, they know what they're talking about. And they don't know a bit more about it than you do. They weren't alive then. There are no recordings of history of those times. They see symbols carved in stone, and they are the ones who are interpreting what those symbols mean. No one alive from that time, no, no knowledge passed down to say, well, this symbol means that, that symbol means this. Spirit, though, the Holy Spirit is truth. And it does reveal unto us that Jesus is the truth, the life, the way, and there is no other. For there, are, for there are three that bear record in heaven. And that's of great importance, my friends. This declaration that there are three that bear record in heaven. The plurality of God is set before us from the even beginning of the word of God. Elohim, many in one. And they said, let us make man in our image and our likeness. And they did. Man is a trinity. Man has three. He's... God created a body of flesh from the earth. Then he breathed into man life. Man became a living soul, and that soul also has a spirit. The soul and the spirit are like the bone and the marrow. The marrow within the bone. The bone and the marrow is within that bone. The marrow can, certain types of cancer, destroy the marrow and the bone. The bone is still there, and it makes the, the bone weak. The spirit has died because of sin, sin nature. So the soul still lives on, but the soul is weak because it cannot comprehend the things of God. We cannot comprehend the things of God being in that state of death, being spiritually discerned. 
we need to be born again by the power of the Holy Spirit. But there are these three. These three bear record in heaven. The Father, it's God the Father. The Word, which is, as we know, Scripture says, was with God, it was God from the very beginning of creation. Now, there are certain distinctions. The Lord, there's many names in the Old Testament for this person, the Word. The Lord is also a messenger of God at times. But he was not yet born into this world. He was not yet Jesus. It was a name hid, not yet revealed. That body of flesh had not yet been created, did not yet come into existence for him to inhabit it, but yet he still existed, that part, that part of God that indwelt that body. In the fullness of time, that woman would eventually come into this world in the point in time where it would be the time for the Holy Spirit to overshadow her and the power of the Most High God to come upon her and to conceive in her this one, even Jesus. He came into this world. came down from on high. Yeah, he was with God in eternity past and had glory with God. And he came down into this world. He was sent of the Father to come and do his will. Being born of the Virgin, even as it was foretold he would be, Holy Ghost bearing witness of it. That Holy Ghost is one that shows us Jesus Christ, causes us to believe upon Him, it gives us the gift of faith, and it begins to teach us the all things of God. And these three, yes, there are three, these three, not four, not five, not one, not two, but three. And some of you, you get to the very last word in this sentence and you forget everything said before it. These three are one. All one, one. Yeah, that's all I see is one. Three are the one. These three are the one. Not one, not two, but three. Not four, not five, but three. Three. How many times do you have to read it? And these distinctions of the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. The Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. How many times do you have to read about them in the scriptures? You can read about the Holy Ghost and what it does. It quickens. It makes us alive. It gives us understanding. It intercedes with the, for us, between us and God, with groanings which we cannot hear, cannot be uttered. That's not the Father. That's not the Son, but that's the Holy Ghost. The Son was born of the Virgin, came into this world, and lived a life of some 33 years, went, in, uh, went about and the appointed time he came to John the Baptist and said, I come to be baptized of you. And he said, but I need to be baptized of you, Jesus. And he said to John, suffered to be so to fulfill all righteousness. And he began a period of ministry there according to the plan and purpose of God that would eventually take him to the cross of Calvary there where he'd suffer, bleed, and die. By the shedding of his blood, atone for our sins, dying in our place, taking upon him our sins, and he paying the debt that we owe. We owe the debt to God because of sin. Many of us are still adding to that debt daily, not understanding that Jesus has to pay, he had to pay for every bit of it right there on the cross of Calvary. And all it's all oh, with the debts paid, and it's it's a, it's an open it's an open uh, open well. I can just take all I want. I can do all I want. I don't have to worry about it. That's not the spirit that ought to be in you. You ought to have a love for God and a desire to keep His commandments to live in a way that pleases God. And if you don't have that, there's something wrong with you. These three are one, one, yes, one thrice holy God. See, the thing is, a Trinitarian doesn't deny the one God. But the Unitarian denies the thrice holy God. The oneness denies the thrice holy God. The modalist denies the thrice holy God. The Muslim 
denies the thrice holy God. And as long as you're denying the thrice holy God, you're denying His Son, you're denying the Father, you're denying the Holy Ghost, you're condemning yourselves because you refuse to believe upon His Son. The Son who said, If you believe upon me, believe also upon Him that sent me. The Son refers to the Father as another person. What do you not understand about that? The Son refers to the Holy Spirit as another person. What do you not understand about that? Oh, but God is one. God is one. Yes, God's one. In three persons. Condemn yourself to hell. Go on believing your heresy. And you'll fall right off into hell because you preach and teach a false gospel. You teach Jesus who is a liar. A deceiver. Standing there in just a bold faced lie saying, My Father's in heaven. When he is the Father, you say. The sad thing is, you make him to be a liar. You deny his words. You don't believe him. You don't believe in that one who stood there before them and professed, That's my Father. My Father's in heaven, he said. Father sent me, I come from the Father, and I'm going back to the Father. Completing the circle. He came down, and what is it that he came down? And then he came down, he also has to go back up, and he did. And the witness of the Bible is that he is at the right hand of the throne of God. Oh, but then there you either want to reinterpret that. Well, it means he's in the midst of God. He's in, you know, he's in God. No, that's not what it says. Some four or five times the statement it is, he's at the right hand of God. And every time he's stand he's sitting there except for one where he stands. And that when that is when Philip is dying and fixing to go on to heaven. I do sincerely believe that he stands to receive his brothers and sisters unto him. To be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord, and he stands to receive us. We're blood-bought saints. Now, these three that are one, and the Holy Spirit gives witness to this, says, and there are three that bear witness in earth. The Spirit, again, the Holy Spirit, and the water and the blood, which is, again, speaking of his true literal birth, and these three agree in one, that he was the begotten, only begotten Son of God. And if we receive the witness of men, great many men, the prophets of old foretold and bore witness of his coming, the writers of the Gospels bear witness of him, and all New Testament saints bear witness of him. If, we receive, if you receive the witness of men like me, it says the witness of God is even greater for this is the witness of God, God the Father, that is, which he hath testified of his Son, and that he is a Son, he has a Father. Any mother that has children, there's a mother. She's not a mother unless she has children. I'm not a dad unless I have children. God is not a father unless he has children. And he only has one begotten son. A family, a man and woman can uh, adopt children. That just makes them parents, caretakers. They have not literally brought forth a child into this world. We pick back up here now again in Romans chapter 5, where we left off last time. Verse 11 there said, And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Atonement for what reason? Why did we, why did we need to be atoned? What did we need an atonement for? Because of sin. Verse 12, Wherefore, as by one man sin, by one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin, 
and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. That one man is the first act. Some out there believe heresy. They preach heresy. They say that first Adam was Jesus. No, Jesus is the second Adam. The first Adam and the second Adam are not the same. The first Adam was created by God from the dust of the earth. and God breathed life into him and he became a living soul. God also gave that first Adam knowledge of all things in the world. Knowledge of all the living things which he created and he having created all things before him to prove he was God there in the Garden of Eden, God created one by one another, one of each of those, and brought them unto Adam and Adam saw him create them. And he brought each of them before them and he allowed Adam to name them. Adam had a knowledge beyond anything we have today. And God allowed Adam to name them. After they were all named, after they were all presented unto him, there was not one helpmate that was fit in all creation found for Adam. So God causes the deep sleep to fall upon him. He takes ribs from him and he creates woman, woman from man. She was deceived by the serpent, but Adam she brought that fruit and held it out there and he saw that in her hand he knew what it was she's got that fruit from the tree she got that fruit I, I told her we weren't supposed to eat that I told her not to touch it she got that idea in her head somewhere because she said to the serpent oh, if we touch it we'll die oh, sir, well, you'll, not sure, you'll surely not die God said don't eat it thing is we think that we can play with sin it's this that, that that opinion that entered in oh if you touch it you'll die and in that she she probably tapped it lightly at first nothing happened and she grabbed hold of it let go and nothing happened it's my it just uh you can visualize it you just imagine that if you approach something somebody's told you if you touch the, if you touch that you'll die but you don't believe them and the thoughts in your mind, what if I do, what if I, will it kill me, will, will I really die? When the fact of the matter is, it is said, if you eat it, I want you to eat it. She grabbed it, pulled it off, and nothing happened. Oh, it must be a safe to eat then. And that's how the devil works. He makes us think it's safe. You can think about it. Just think about what that would help. Think about this. Whatever wickedness it, it brings into your mind, and he begins to get you to dwelling upon it, thinking about it. And, oh, it really hasn't hurt to think about it. Well, go over and kind of play with it a little bit. Go over and consider Talk to that person. Go over and touch that thing. Go over and look at it. Oh, it didn't hurt. He deceives us into sin. She was deceived. She was beguiled. But no, that first Adam, he saw it in her hand. He knew what she had done. And I really do believe that the love of a husband is that he'll give his life for his wife. So, oh, she's done it. She's already eaten of it. She's going to die. Might as well die with her. But he ate of that fruit knowing what it was. And sin entered into the world by that man and by that death entered into the world. You know what that does to the theory of evolution and all you that want to believe that in some way, shape, or form evolution was used in creation it blows it out of the water. It makes it impossible. You cannot have thousands of years of existence up to the beginning of man and all these animals and life forms because there's no death in the world yet. So that means there was life and abundance of life growing and spreading and overpopulation after these so-called thousands of years. 
the gap theory, the day age theory, evolution is all proven wrong in this very statement right here that by this one man, by one man, sin entered into the world and death by sin. Sin entered into the world in and through Adam because he disobeyed God. God gave him one commandment. He had free will. Yes, he did. But look what it did. Look what that free will did for us. It condemned us. And there are those of you today out there that have such a high hope of your free will and your self-determination, and you don't understand this, that your free will is taking you right off into hell. Because you've deceived yourself by it. Serpents deceived you. Devils deceived you. Oh, your free will, you can determine your destiny. You can be like God. You can tell God what to do. No. You're deceived. You're in a condition of being dead before God. Spiritually discerned, living in darkness and loving it. Death passed upon all men. Upon all those, the seed of Adam, they were born in trespasses and sins. We were conceived and shaped in iniquity. Our patriarch in the line of it here, this first Adam, he died. Spiritually he died that day. And he began to physically die. And then God drove them out of the garden because there was a tree of life. They could, hey, if they'd have eaten that, they'd have been like that forever. Nothing could have been done about it. God driving them out. And all their children then are born in this condition of being with a fallen nature. A depraved nature. Yes. Some hate that word. Oh, I don't believe in depravity. I don't believe in sin, a sinful nature. Well, that's the devil deceiving you to deny the word of God. For death passed upon all men. All their children were born in a, spirit, a state of spiritual death. See, Adam and Eve were able to walk with God before that. They were able to commune with God, feel God's presence, hear Him, come, feel Him coming. Yeah, I, I believe they could feel God moving into the garden, coming nigh unto them, and they could feel that they knew God was coming. But after they died and they were in a condition of sin, and they saw themselves as naked. There was such a loneliness. For they could no longer feel the presence of God anymore. And when they heard the voice of God in the garden. And they couldn't feel his presence anymore. But they heard that he was there. could hear his voice. They were dead to God. They could no longer feel his presence. They, could, they were in darkness. They could no longer see him like they did before. Death had passed upon them, and it passed unto all their heritage, all their lineage, which includes all of us. All have sinned. Yes, we all are born with a sinful nature, and we all do become sinners by practice, friends. All of us. Sadly, I'm out of time again. I pray God would impress upon all of you that may hear this today to, to repent and believe the gospel that you might be saved. God bless you.